Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today we are taking a look at some truly high level players playing on DSDR. You can see over here on the right hand side of the screen we have for our blue team spawning on the eastern side Nep Neptuni, Nep Neptunio, <laughs> Neptuni Zero. Uh, going to be our blue team leader here, coming in at a whopping 35 true skill, plenty of chevrons to match it. I'm, I, I, you know, maybe I should memorize what the, the names of these ranks are, but for now, uh, you know, if you see any silver, that's pretty high. And basically, the bigger the symbol, the better. <laughs> it's a simple system, but uh, quite effective, certainly. Spawning on the western side for our red team. Leading with a red Cortex Commander going into a vehicle bay, we have Delexion. Almost reminds me of a DeLorean, which is a uh, pretty, pretty epic looking car. It's got those beautiful uh, hatch door wings that, that open up like a bird. A majestic eagle taking flight into the sky. <laughs> but Delexion here going to be playing a frontline position with a vehicle bay. I do love to see it on this bottom part of the map because it is so flat and open, as you can see. Let's get a little music up in this. There we go. Uh, you can see there's a uh, there, there's this huge flat open area on the bottom of this map, which is absolutely lovely for vehicles because they don't take any advantages from the movement penalties that we would see on the regular slopes and arches and valleys. Oh, that is very interesting. Trash Panda using the commander's vertical, well, the lack of a vertical build limit to uh, build a, a bot lab down here on the front lines. That's actually really smart. That actually allows you to get units out front way quicker than you normally would. Typically what we see is when players do this, what ends up happening is they build a lab somewhere over here. Uh, and then of course those units have to kind of stream out this way. But actually if you build your lab really forward like this, you get the advantage of getting these units out way quicker on the front lines. So you can get these Metal extractors a little quicker. You can always send units back to capture this, or you can just leave this for the player here, which looks like is what's going to happen this time. So actually, I really, really like this move here by Trash Panda. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Neptunio, plenty of uh, wind turbines going to be queued up here, and I think that's a great idea. Wind power is pretty good on uh, on this map. You can see wind risk is 10.4. Uh, well, yeah, the percentage of wind speed below six. It's 10.4. Uh, pretty good for both factions. Uh, and max wind speed of 16, so it's, it's definitely going to be very, very nice. A couple of rovers have already made it across... Rascals, rather, have already made it across the field. There's some downed units here and there, so I, w I didn't quite catch who wins the, uh, the Brightworks Get a Unit Out and About on the Field award. Uh, but certainly, it won't matter with these pros. They're all going to be getting to the aggression so quickly that uh, certainly... It, it won't it won't matter <laughs> everybody should have some units out by this point in the bottom half of the map we are going to have avocado versus potaporo and uh looks like we're gonna have some interesting conflict here both bot players bot players playing bot <laughs> there's a little there's your word sandwich of the day for you munch on that while you watch this beyond all reason game more wind power coming up on the northern section of the map here and then in the tech position the solid tech position we have Rum Cola uh, already starting up that advanced solar panel. Very nicely done, by the way, eating up some of this uh, bot lab in the meantime when we have the build power to spare. That way we can uh, eat it up very quickly whenever we're ready. Love to see some more advanced solar panels coming up. Eat up these T1 solar panels. Looks like we are very well aware of what we should be doing in the back line there. Kalandori here is eventually going to be going for a air lab. Very interesting. We do have bots out, so clearly they went for a bot lab at some point and uh, are now switching into that that uh, air play. Maybe we'll see some bombing. Maybe we'll see some transport shenanigans, whatever it may be. I can't wait to see it. Steel Blue has made their way all the way over to this part of the map, this little uh, high ground mountain. And this is a pretty important place to contest because it grants you access uh, not only to the back line, well, to the front line, I guess, up, up north here, uh, but it also gives you this sort of all-access path to the, uh, the the front line player in the southern part of the map. So keeping control of this is actually really, really important, and I like what Steel Blue is doing, at least at the moment. Ah, no, that is unfortunate. Dunna has, well, unfortunate for Trash Panda. It's an excellent move by Dunna, who has pushed all the way forward with the commander and degunned the bot lab of Trash Panda. So I guess that's one disadvantage, right? It does expose your laboratory quite a bit here 
Now, luckily, Dress Panda does have the uh, resources to put up another bot lab, which is going to be important. But at least for now, they are going to be on the back foot, so that's going to be quite costly. Uh, Geothermal Plant is up for Revoke here, so that's going to be plenty of energy heading not only into their hands, but into their team's hands as they overflow. Not an easy way to spend that much energy. I think Converters are definitely a good idea here, um, especially in the early game. Later into the game, 300 energy doesn't really mean very much, but early on it can be a, a tremendous benefit. Kalandori is focusing on getting some fighters out at the moment. We do have a single constructor. We built a constructor turret. We actually can't spend all of our resources at the moment, so we are just slowly trickling out fighters. It'll be worth it, though, in case a uh, commander gets brave on a transport or something like that. It's good to have one or two fighters out to shut that down. Avocado winning the southern fight very nicely. You can see these bots pushing forward. The pawn, the pawn rocketeer combo is one of my personal favorites. It gives you the flexibility of those pawn speed, which you know you can run around the static defenses really quickly. But you also have that long range siege option with those Rocketeers, which is very, very important. Now, Alexion, the uh, vehicle player, has uh, shown us that they are not afraid to get their hands dirty. What did I just... Some Somebody's commander just exploded. Ah, there it is. Oh no, wasn't there. Whoops. I'm missing a commander explosion somewhere. <laughs> oh, well there's one. Uh, that was Delexion's commander going down right there in the middle of the map to a bunch of I will one or no will one sorry will one's uh, forces here will one looking pretty scuffed up too though steel blue moving in from behind to try and reinforce this area uh, those units are actually getting a tremendous value they're collapsing on this front line and will one is forced to retreat because if he doesn't uh, their commander is going to blow as well could try and destruct a, another commander here get a, uh, a two for one gambit that's always a Always a good idea. Always a valuable trade there. Meanwhile, Avocado is pushing forward, and this army is looking absolutely unstoppable. That is a lot of Rocketeers, and it's very expensive to push into that. Doesn't take many of those Rockets to kill a pawn. Uh, and especially when the Rocketeers are organized nicely, they, they're uh, spread out in a nice concave, they can definitely do a lot of work. Oh, we need a pawns in front, though. Otherwise, yeah, we don't want the, the Rocketeers to be tanking this. If we can at all help it, anyways. There we go. We're getting a slightly better engagement now. And those orange pawns will be mopped up, but that is all that she wrote for Bing Bing Bang. Uh, meanwhile, Paraporo is trying to rebuild on the front lines here. I didn't keep a super close eye on it, but it looks like their economy must have been ravaged. Maybe they built up front and it was torn down at some point, but either way, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're in a bit of a predicament here. This production facility for Steel Blue has been ravaged as well by a bunch of pawns from OS Delivery. Part of the Aphis clan. <laughs> tech is firmly out and about by this point in the match. Usually tech, T2 tech structures come out uh, around the two minute mark, give or take. And it looks like that is no exception this match. We have Neptunio going for that T2. We also have T2 constructing back here as well uh, under the, the careful watch of Clue. Rumcola has also gone for an air lab, so we do see two fighter walls built here, although the Fighter wall for the pink player here for the for the blue or the yeah the red team specifically sorry it's looking a little bit stronger than the fighter wall for the green team. Overall, if I had to divide this map, it's uh, kind of an interesting split map here. We have like a, kind of a diagonal split, something like that. Um, interesting. We don't see we don't see DSDR split like that usually. Usually, the the northern half is usually contested with one person winning this area up here. And then uh, basically a stalemate down in this river here. But to see the red team pushed so far forward is actually really, really nicely done. Now a lot of these are stationary units. We don't have any grunts in the mix here. That's stationary units. That's a that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they're uh, they're they're slower units. They're they're assault units. They're not um, they're not raiding units. So uh, very slow, very steady, and uh, definitely going to be easy to run around with pawns, grunts, that sort of thing. And that's absolutely the right maneuver. There's a lot of artillery shelling down, but it's not really those that are the scary part here. It's these bad boys, the Pounders. You can see the AoE on these tanks is absolutely tremendous, and they're devastating against T1 units. Pawns, Grunts, uh, I mean, even Rocketeers and, and Thugs and Maces are both going to have, or are all going to have, rather, a really hard time dealing with those Pounders. Best thing you can do is outrange them. Just set up your Rocketeers, your Maces, your Thugs, whatever it is. Uh, in, in such a way that you can walk backwards while firing on them. They do slightly outrange them. Uh, and you're going to be in a, in, a, in a decent position there. 
Uh, otherwise, you just need to jump on them and, and commit to fighting them, and you're going to take tremendous losses. But as long as you spread out your units really thinly, um, it'll be okay because they won't be able to get a great AoE fight. Or great AoE connection, rather. Area of effect. There's a lot of gaming terms that are like commonplace and, and you, you you kind of operate with the assumption that everyone knows about them, but you know, maybe that's not fair. Maybe there's some newcomers here. If that's the case, welcome not only to gaming, but to Beyond All Reason. Or maybe the other way around, welcome to welcome not only to Beyond All Reason, but to gaming. Not sure how uh, how potent that <laughs> you know that's su that subset of my uh, viewership is. I uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident that most of the, most of the people watching this are going to be well versed on gaming lingo for for better or worse. Counter pounders here, and we are building a lot of them. We have five of them out on the field now for FNS, uh, which is quite nice. Those pounders can definitely lock down a front line, really really shut down any of that early T1 aggression. Quite expensive and very slow, and you definitely don't want to lose them. For, for a T1 unit, 220 metal is definitely on the, uh, the the expensive side. You can see these Wolverines, they only cost 155. Rocket Bots, only 120. Yeah, it's, they're, they're, they're pricey. They're pricey for a T1. Steel Blue is recovering from that run-by that happened and is rebuilding some static defenses over here on this side to make sure that nothing can sneak through again. Meanwhile, Trash Panda has recovered and recaptured this northern side of the map, which is always excellent to see. And we were forced to build a bot lab on the Upper Peninsula. I really like the idea of building that forward bot lab here, but I think it just wasn't meant to be, at least not this time. Resbots would be phenomenal down here. We could pick up this construction bot for one, um, but also we could either either pick up or we could reclaim all of these, uh, these other bots down here. Commander is a little far forward. That is quite a few thugs, aggravators, maces, all that good stuff. In assault composition for sure. This is meant to do damage. We have enough pawns to posture properly so that they can't really do anything about this. But reclaim, reclaim, reclaim. That's the name of the game here. And there is plenty of reclaim. We can activate our superior metal vision here and it'll give us a nice little indicator. Oh, well, it should anyway. Let's see if it'll update itself. Huh, not sure why it's not showing us this, uh, this little pile there. There we are. 356 metal. Definitely worth picking it up and putting it back into your army composition. Um, but it looks like that's the biggest scrap pile, at least right now. Very nice. We do see a Juno coming down. That's always a uh, interesting investment. It's a it's accessible at T1, but it really feels much more like a T2. It, it requires a whole lot of energy to power, and it's uh, really a it's it's less of a specific tool than a lot of the other ones are. Right, like a a unit it fires its weapon and it does damage. Pretty self self explanatory. The Juno. It's a, uh, it, it, it releases like an EMP storm that destroys mines, destroys scouts, um, destroys radar and radar jammers. So yeah, it's kind of a weird one, but it's definitely very useful. We do see anti-nukes up and about now. We're making sure to cover all of our bases. We do have bombers on the production queue for rum cola, so I'd love to see those going in for a little bit of a hit here and there. We've started up a T2 economy properly. We've got a fusion reactor. We're going for those two advanced energy converters, and then we can switch into either another fusion reactor or proper unit production. This will be more than enough to uh, satiate the, uh, the the lab here if we want to start pumping out units in mass. We also have plenty of metal here, doing a really nice job of balancing the economy, actually. Interestingly, we went for a whole bunch of these construction aircraft, but I guess that works just as well as uh, a bunch of turrets would. So yeah, very nicely done. We can see the exact same thing queued up here. And indeed, Neptunio showing us that, that build that I really love. You build a fusion reactor, two uh, energy converters, another fusion reactor, another two energy converters. Um, and then you can either go into, uh, you can actually start thinking about T3 or T2 mass production at that point, or you can build another two energy converters uh, and then go into an advanced fusion reactor if you want to go super greedy mode. Yep, looks like we're just teching up in the back lane right now. Front line is becoming sort of static. I would love to see this position broken. It would be kind of costly for these units right here, but I think it'd be worth it. I mean, yeah, you would you would lose a lot of your units, but you could also just reclaim a lot of the stuff that you, uh, that you kill up here. I'm going to speed up this front line for the moment while we wait for these units to come out and we step into the proper T2 stage. We do see some hounds out in the field already, and that's quite nice. We've got some dragon's teeth. They were surrounding something. Something that no longer exists. 
Uh, a couple of hounds can be really, really dangerous. Oh, we do have a bombing run. We'll slow it down. As the bombers come in here. Looks like they're going to target... I'm not sure what their target was. Maybe they were just hoping to hit these units over here or something. Whatever their plan was, they uh, didn't end up manifesting. Ah, they're going after these front lines. This actually could be pretty dangerous. Okay. Yeah, a lot of those connect. Okay, yeah, very nicely done. Yeah, a lot of those actually do manage to connect and wipe out uh, yeah, a pretty decent force of the uh, the purple units there. Bunch of the pawns. These windmills are spread out large enough that I don't think they're going to chain react with each other. Uh, this is a very tempting target, though. Certainly hit something back here and cause a nice big chain reaction. Windmills, uh, advanced energy converters, surely. Build power, always really annoying when you take that out. Is this T2? Oh, it is T2. So we, we've gone straight up the tech chain here. Delexion taking advantage of that lack of harassment that they've been given. And uh, yeah, now they're using now they're using these uh, T2 units to devastating effect. You can see just how powerful those things are. Raining down sieges of fire here. Absolutely melting away these T1 units. It's like 30%-ish, more, like, more or less. When those, when those uh, artillery rounds hit, so that is quite nice. We can step this back into high gear here. Uh, this was very nice. Also, I meant to point out, but I got sidetracked here. We do have a rattlesnake on the front lines. And you can see these things have a pretty tremendous range. They're, they really are a, a proper T2 uh, artillery. They, uh, they're they very costly, though, so you definitely have to put them in a really effective spot. Firing up here under the mountain is quite nice. I wouldn't even have minded seeing this put on this like little uh, you know this little hill thing here. That way we can fire in high trajectory mode and take out this entire northern section, or we can uh, focus on the front lines over here. Meanwhile, these artillery are forcing Will 1 backwards off the front line. Avocado is still holding strong, though. We are seeing those T2 units coming out here and there, starting up a fusion reactor to actually properly fund everything. We have a lot of metal in the bank, so it's mostly build power that we're lacking. This Juno is getting tremendous effect, though. Really impressive stuff. Yeah, that, that Juno actually is uh, becoming more and more valuable the more of these uh, these radars and anti-radars that are, are being shot down here. I quite like that move. I might have to start doing that myself. Uh, we see Rattlesnake built by Steel Blue up here, and that is really dangerous. This one is in a much better position, I would argue. It can shoot pretty far with this, uh, with this much height, and he can shoot way out into the front lines here. Having a little bit of a uh, rattlesnake off. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alright, let's slow this down. These things are getting spicy. Rattlesnake on the front lines here. Tearing apart some of these artillery. Launching its devastating beams. Beams and arcs of plasma here. Yep, tremendous effect against these too. We do have spy bots out. Paralyze all this as well. Very nicely done. Spybots are easy to forget, but they're definitely very powerful. They're a, they're a great intelligence gathering tool. They're kind of APM intensive because uh, you can you you can you can definitely lose them on the front line by not paying attention to them. They accidentally walk into an enemy. Uh, but also, if you have the resources to micromanage them, they can be tremendously devastating. There they go. Honestly, I don't even think the paralysis was necessary there. I think we could have just let the artillery fire away, uh, but still effective regardless. More of these Juno missiles coming down here. Yeah, that's got to be a big, big pain, really. You're, uh, you're, you're kind of relying on that radar for uh, intelligence, and for it to, for it to just go down like that is quite unfortunate. This rival snake can't actually shoot up at that hill anymore, so uh, we're, we're kind of forced to just infinitely repair this thing. I guess we're just gonna abandon it. Yeah, there's not really much point. Might as well just make units instead of uh, worrying about the Rattlesnake that's just inevitably going to fall. Ah, uh, Tremor was brought out here. They have their suppressive fire mode, which is the uh, interesting new mode. It fires a little slowly, from what I understand. A little slower, anyways. Uh, but it does it does a huge AoE. Unfortunate that that went down. I wanted to look at that a little more. <laughs> There's notes here. Rate of fire is much higher than before. We are resing it. I gotta pay attention to that. I wanna see. Rattlesnake is really getting its value. You have to always kind of weigh that. When you're when you're making these artillery 
artillery uh, defenses here. You, you have to kind of weigh, like, how much value am I actually going to get out of this thing before it either gets overrun or we can break the front lines. And uh, you, usually that comes down to the, the position of the thing. Uh, and this one is positioned in a great position where it can fire away at all of these frontline defenses here. Okay, hold on. Let's look at this really quickly. Rapid artillery. So in this fire mode, it's got a range of 1,275. underscore tooltip. <laughs> um, do I know what that means? Not entirely. Do I want to see this thing used, though? Absolutely. See, these things can fire super far out. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. That is fast. That's tremendously fast. Okay. Looks like its AoE is absolutely way bigger, though. Oh, those snipers hurt. <laughs> you watch those tanks just absolutely crumble right there. They took some really, really heavy hits on that one. Now we have the War of the Sheldons versus the Welders here. Fatboy as well in front for a little bit of fire support. Ooh, EMP bombing. Interesting. That's one really nice way of dealing with this. Yep, and those rattlesnakes, they tear apart this entire push. Very nicely done. So far, I gotta say, I like what the I like the moves that Rumcola is bringing out as our uh, red team's air player, as opposed to Kalandori, who's the blue team air player here. However, we do have some bombers in reserve here, so there's definitely a plan coming together. It's just gonna be uh, just gonna be a second before we figure it out, before we deploy it. Looks like we're going in for another EMP bombing run here. We're gonna try and we're gonna sh shut down the factory at the very least. That's actually a really, really important EMP run there. A lot of these EMP bombers do get shot down by these fighters, though, so that's quite nice. That is, at the very least, going to mean that those uh, EMP bombers are taken off the field for a little while. Spybots continue to march forward here, helping this army push in. Spybots are absolutely critical if you're going to be using snipers. Snipers, they can waste their shots really easily because, uh, you know, it's just a tiny little projectile, and if they fire and miss, uh, they have to charge up all over again. And it can be really, really devastating. Huge commendations to uh, Paraporo here, who has actually rebuilt tremendously. Making a, making a great effort out of rebuilding here in the bottom half of the map. And I have to say, that's, uh, it's always lovely to see. Two of these tremors firing away. Interesting. I, I really I, I need I need to look at some actual numbers and see what uh see what these actually cost or rather what the uh, what the actual changes are. We've got a uh, we've got this rattlesnake sieged up here. <laughs> Tons of static defense. The uh, the little walls here to cover that. Meanwhile, up north, counter judos have been deployed. Very nicely done. Love to see one parked up here, and maybe another one thrown onto the front lines just as well. Ah, oh, we did see one thrown on the front lines. Very nicely done. That's going to give the artillery the radar vision that they need. Oh, well, we don't need more than one. But it is going to give the radar uh, vision that we need in order to fire into the fog of war here. Maybe? Oh, we don't have... Do we not have radar? Oh, yeah, we're missing radar on the front lines. Okay. Well, we'll run and uh, as well... Avocado should probably get on top of building some radar on the front lines. Otherwise, uh, yeah, the, the Juno is not going to be tremendously effective. I mean, we have the spy bots out, but you don't need the Juno if you got the spy bots. So <laughs> we're sort of uh, we're sort of going in circles here. Fiends breaking the front lines here. That's exactly what they're great at. Paraporo calls GG. Whoa! A bunch of marauders swept through up north here, wiped away the entire production facility of Steel Blue sweeped out the entire northern part of this map and suddenly this entire thing has tilted in the blue blue team's favor blue team's favor blue team's flavor blue raspberry <laughs> our blue player our, our actual blue player is building an advanced fusion reactor and uh, we have the we have the build power we have the energy we have the metal so it's really just a matter of time before that comes up the economy is starting to grow exponentially here we can see the pink player here the hot pink player actually has an advanced fusion reactor up already I'm not sure if they had a regular fusion and they ate it up, but whatever they've done, they've done tremendously to get a... Uh, oh no, there's another fusion over here, so 
we've just been uh, really greedy and we've got a, a big economy for it, which is quite nice. Certainly an air player with a big economy can do quite a lot. Quite a lot indeed. We've all, we've all seen the Nostradamus maneuver. <laughs> Need I say more? Uh, Thor is out, and that's the start of the proper T3 stage. Marauders are kind of like the the baby T3s, right? They're like the lowest of the low for the T3. The uh, the Thor is when you start getting into those proper T3 units. The first Thor you see on the battlefield should invoke fear and pain, misery, and woe. Uh, revoke. Not invoke, revoke. Up here reclaiming with the commander, and I love to see that. I'd love to see a T1 bot lab for some res bots. Just, you know, make make that job a little bit faster. But still, this is going to be just as well. If we take a look at our metal vision here, we can see 4.1 thousand metal left over on the uh, front lines here. Paraporo doing an excellent job of using the corpses of their fallen defenses to fund greater and greater units. Very nicely done. I would love to see maybe the inclusion of a couple of scuttles. Since we're using so many Junos this game and we're taking out the radar constantly, I would love to see some Scuttles moving in here to uh, try and blow up some of these defenses. We have a counter-intrusion system set up here. Seismic. Seismic uh, detector. For measuring when robots are stepping around. They stole Shai Holud tech. Vanguard is out on the front line and that's a really powerful siege option. That super heavy, super heavy siege cannon. Fire away from a super long distance and, uh, well, you can just watch the devastation here. Mm, boom, and there go the units. Let's get a close-up shot of this bad boy. I do absolutely love these units. The Vanguard is so powerful. I love the I love the design of the spiders in this game as well. That's always been a, a, a big fascination of mine. I love the idea of the all terrain units are always designed after some sort of some sort of insect like creature. The cortex, they, their uh, their termites look more like ants to me, but uh, the uh, armada spiders are just uh, fear inducing. Spybot used to great effect there shuts down all of these hounds and allows T1 units to contest the. T2 proper. Very nicely done. It's a great way of getting some really efficient trades. Meanwhile, there's a bunch of, uh, a bunch of, what, oh gosh, what are these called? Sheldon, that's right. A bunch of Sheldon that have been brought out here onto the northern part, the, the island that Revoke has captured with the help of Neptunio's Marauders. And, uh, that's, that's actually really important. I would love to see these move down here next so that they can, uh, shoot at this base and take it down. We are starting to spam out units here. We're spamming out some ticks, but we already have Junos on the field, so that's not really going to be tremendously effective. Bombers are going after the commander here. They will get it. Very nicely done. That is the win condition for the game, so it's definitely worth sniping one of those whenever you can. I think they were probably hoping the commander would stand right next to the Thor, and, uh, that, you know, one thing would lead to the next. <laughs> For the time being, it looks like everyone is just getting ready for a proper T3 late game. We'll go ahead and speed this up as the units get amped up, as the uh, as the production facilities ramp up, and it looks like front lines are being designated. Rows and rows of snipers here on both sides, eager to fire at each other. Sniper versus sniper is a very, very odd dynamic. <laughs> as soon as they get within range, everything just annihilates immediately. You might even call it a total annihilation. Name drop. <laughs> Loads of Arbiters here to counter the uh, the Sheldons that were up on this hill. Those Arbiters can shoot quite a bit further, of course. Uh, which is quite nice. We have not used these bombers, and we've been massing quite a lot of them here. We've got a grand total of 29 bombers here. 30, I guess. 30 bombers, and we are aiming to end the game with that many bombers. We're, we're really looking for a, a devastating hit with that much, uh, that much firepower. Tick Swarm versus Tick Swarm. I love when these games get into that proper T3, but it's much more likely that, uh, <laughs> much more likely that we're gonna, we're gonna end up seeing a lot more T1 here. 
loads of tremors break through and kill a, or rather loads of marauders break through and kill some of these tremors, but ultimately not really as much as you're hoping for. That was a great EMP bombing run. Paralyzed all of these shells and completely took them off the field. And uh, these tanks were quick to jump on top of all that. Very, very nicely done. Those EMP bombers just open your open the doors to tremendous value. Just they can just absolutely ruin a uh, entire unit composition with just a single strike. Very nicely done. What I would love to see for the blue team, or well, for either team really, but uh, I think it's more realistically possible for the blue team is to start moving anti-air units into into little pockets where they can hide. So like if you could get an anti-air unit in here somewhere, although I guess there is this uh, pulsar out now. But anyways, if you could get an anti-air unit underneath the enemy's air wall so that it starts uh, it starts disassembling it, it can be really powerful. Trash Panda has built a, a well, a devastating force on the front line here. Although, it did get EMP bombed. And uh, no force is <laughs> no force is devastating when it's completely in, inoperable. Uh, sounds, sounds dumb to say, but you know what I mean. Catapults here. Tremendously effective. They do tons of damage to T1, but it's not like they do low damage to T2 or 3 either. They, uh, they, they put out a lot of missiles, and when those missiles hit, things start to explode, and that's really all that matters. Thor coming out from the uh, northern side here as e and bombers push down in the south. I like, I like the fact that our blue player here, Neptunio, is getting units out on the field. That's something that we see a lot of these backline players fail to do often enough is uh, actually contribute on the front lines. Like a lot of times you'll just the game will be over by the time that <laughs> by the time that those units hit the field. From an overarching perspective here, uh, I have to say that the the green air force is looking a little bit better than the uh, the pink one at the moment. Now that part of the part of the reason for that is we we can see that the uh, the green air force consists of two different players, so of course it's going to be a little bit stronger than the pink air force. Uh, but also, we've got loads and loads of bombers out here. We've got the EMP bombers, so you know, don't get me wrong; those are very powerful. Um, but they're definitely not the—they're uh, definitely not the pinnacle of dealing damage to your enemy's economy. <laughs> All right, we do have counter EMP bombing, trying to tickle the front line more than anything. We're just baiting out the uh, the bombers from from our enemy, though. Ah, that's a lot of EMP bombers to go down right there, and really just to paralyze a couple of catapults. I don't think that one was worth it. I think that might not have been as cost-effective as we were hoping there. Now a huge force is pushing up north. We've got a tremendous amount of pawns here. EMP missile used on the Thor. I love to see it. Gonna paralyze that, uh, paralyze that there. Pulsar, I'd love to see another missile coming down here. Uh, we're a little late on that. Oh, we paralyzed the geothermal. That's a bit odd. I was gonna say paralyze the units, paralyze the pit bulls, paralyze all the static defense. Cannot paralyze Thors, so these spy bots unfortunately are going to be quite ineffective here. Not going to find their mark. The Prude is extremely strong. I never realized how much health that thing actually had. But it is extremely strong. The uh, EMP bombers trying futilely to blow or to uh, paralyze these Thors. Thors are quite resistant to the effects of paralyzation. But eventually, the combined forces of the T3 as well as these pulsars all around. Will be uh, will be enough to shut down that push. The absolute scale of this battle. Let's zoom in for a closer look. Pardon me here as I just scoot you over and I move, maneuver myself into a control position here as we take a look around the battlefield. Whoa! I need to speed this down to one x. Just realized this is not pleasant with low FPS. As we can see the battlefield from a first-person view. Starting up screamers here on the front line. That's a great way to disassemble the fighter wall as well, especially if it's if it's a you know it's getting really thick. It'll hit that those fighters with some uh, AOE here, and they're going to be constantly firing anyway. So you might as well build them. Very nicely done. I do love to see that. This row of catapults and Shiva are actually hurting each other more than anything else. Yeah, you can see the uh, you can see the catapults taking a lot of fire from the Shiva here. Shiva are completely unafraid of friendly fire. I don't know what actually determines the amount that a unit is afraid of friendly fire, uh, but certainly whatever whatever controls that, the Shiva has very little of it because they are often one to shoot at their own feet, their teammates' feet, anybody's feet, uh, just to kill a couple of ticks. 
In that regard, ticks are actually a pretty good counter to the Shiva. We do have Shiva up for our northern red player here, Dunna. And they're holding the line with that Terminator push. The uh, the, the Thor push, rather, taken down. Um, yeah, this is this is suddenly suddenly turning the tide here. Doing a great job of resurrecting. It's always really important. Resurrecting these Thors and just throwing them right back at the enemy is one tremendous way to gain a really big advantage, especially if you're late into the T3 game. You can also just reclaim, of course, and then those units can be uh, turned into economy that you can use to produce more units, so that's always nice to see. Now we can fly around with the fighters here. Take a little trip over the Red Team C. <laughs> ah, we do have a bulwark that was built over here. As well as some of these T2 walls. You can see these are uh, very sturdy. You know what these remind me of? They remind me of Clash of Clans. <laughs> yeah, they remind me of Clash of Clans. We've got this row of Vanguard. Look at that. Absolutely deadly. Sometimes you just gotta sit and soak it all in. <laughs> you gotta watch the watch the beauty unfold here as these Vanguard fire away at ticks miles and miles in the distance. I can hardly even see whatever they're firing at, but uh, apparently they know what they're shooting at. Thor over here slowly rolling forward on all four of its treads. I gotta say, the Thor has the weirdest looking body I've ever seen. <laughs> Like, why do you need four treads? I feel like two would have been plenty sufficient, but, uh... I guess not for this bad boy. Do the Thor... Do the sides turn upwards? Oh, they do. Oh, that's interesting. It's a little detail I just noticed. These little canister things, when the Thor has its missiles charged, the, the little canister things turn upwards in a, uh... Turn upwards in, like, a... I don't know. They, they just, like, orient themselves like they're ready for launch. <laughs> like a little missile silo. Huh, that's quite cool. I'd never noticed that before. Jump back over here and we can see that these doors have all been put back together and folded into this T3 army. Now we have something that looks really dangerous over here on the northern side for the red team. Uh, I think this I think this army could definitely break the front line here. If we hop out of our first person viewership mode. Viewership of the rings. Um, yeah, this is this is a lot of pawns here. Not a lot of anything else. The economy is very far forward, by the way. It would uh, it would it would not take very much for bombers to push into here. I mean, I know there's plenty of fighters, but uh, certainly, yeah, th those bombers can drop their bombs from far away, so they wouldn't have to get very far before taking out this advanced fusion reactor. Could be quite bad. We'll have to see. Meanwhile, this front line is absolutely dangerous. We have we have Thors, we have vanguards, we have sumos, we have everything under the sun, and everyone is just teching up as hard and as fast as we possibly can. It's time to go into uh, super speed mode. FPS is going to tank a little bit here. Uh, chug, 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 chugging on through. See the FPS counter over here. Yep, it's because of all this unit spam. If we weren't spamming out as many of these techs, we probably could have a higher FPS overall. But uh, that is that is the price we pay for the nearly unlimited amount of uh <laughs> nearly un un unlimited amount of units that we can we can bring out here I'm, qu I'm quite surprised that we aren't going for an end game with uh this many high skill players i would have expected a ragnarok a calamity um some nukes i don't know something something to end this game off here but we are just headed straight into a t3 face off t3 showdown i wonder if we've disabled nukes or something could that be it I'm just surprised with how little there have been. No, we have anti-nukes, so we must have them. Yeah, we have the nuclear ICBM launcher. Interesting. Catapults finally make it up here, and they are going to be enough in numbers to uh, tear down a couple of these vanguards. Long-range plasma cannon somewhere over here. The Basilisk firing away, launching its long-range plasma fire. Onto the front lines. Meanwhile, Vanguard are trying their best, but really all they can shoot at are these ticks. <laughs> Nobody wants to push in here. This, 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 these armies are just getting too big, and there's not really a way to uh, to break this tie here. I think the army for the the red team is looking quite a bit better, though. With all of those all those Thors, we also have Titans out. We have uh, plenty of snipers as well. 
Um, and then the Vanguard's firing from behind. I think definitely they're going to be in a better position here if they push in. They could definitely spread their army a little thinner, and the resistance would, would therefore be that much easier to break through. Yeah, overall, actually, I think the red team's production is looking quite quite menacing. Bing Bing Bang has done a phenomenal job of economy, uh, you know, teching up in the back line here. Oh, someone commented, half of a lol cannon. Did I miss it? Oh, I did miss it. Yeah, we are about halfway done with the lol cannon here. The, uh, the, the Ragnarok. Ready to rock and roll. And it can reach pretty far. Definitely wipe away most of the frontline players here. As well as certainly Trash Panda's base. And if we aim it back here, we might even be able to hit some of the players in the back too. So this Ragnarok could be a real game ender, that's for sure. 63,000 metal to build a Ragnarok, by the way. In case you were curious what it costs. And why they are so difficult to get up and running. But look, look at those quad-barreled cannons. I still remember the first time I ever built a Ragnarok and I realized... I, I thought it was going to be like a slightly faster long-range plasma cannon. Uh, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Alright, we are, we are targeting with it, which is always good to see. Uh, yep, we're going to start targeting the base back here, which is absolutely what we want to see. We don't have any vision of actually what's back here, though, so this uh, this fire is going to be a little bit scattered. Um, but still, it's going to be enough to do some serious damage back here. There go the advanced fusion reactors, and just like that, Avocado is wiped off of this map. We're going to change targets here, go after the other frontline player. And this is going to force an all-in from the blue team here. They realize that their time is up. They're going to have to push in with whatever they have and try and break this frontline. These doors have that EMP missile, so if we use this strategically, we can EMP all of these Vanguard here, and basically everything on the front line here can be EMP'd, uh, aside from the other doors. And that is going to be, well, potentially one way that we could swing the battle in the favor of the blue team. The fighters come out here as uh, the, 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 the trap is sprung. <laughs> fighters are going to prioritize the bombers, which means that if you include fighters with your own bombers, uh, you're going to get a really even trade. So the bombers do push forward here, trying to go after this uh, Ragnarok. Oh, it comes pretty low. Wow, and they actually do manage to snipe it. Really nicely done. So the Ragnarok does go down. The bombers aren't done yet, though. They do get in the back line. Whoa, and there goes Bing Bing Bang's entire production facility, as well as the uh, player over here. I believe that was Clue's entire base as well. Bombers are still going to push forward here. Oh, can they drop a few? Uh, it doesn't look like it, but the corpses might still hit something. They do take out a bunch of energy converters for our red player just as well. Suddenly, with the front lines completely ravaged for the blue team, and the back lines completely ravaged for the orange team, or for the red team, rather, uh, this this game just got a whole lot more interesting. <laughs> All it took was one Ragnarok. Now this is about to be resurrected here, uh, so I'd love to see this turn its ugly head and start firing again. Yep, we're going to hand it off to a player with, that actually has advanced fusion reactors. That's absolutely the right move here. I see that mistake make make it. I see people make that mistake a lot. They try and build a Ragnarok, but they don't actually have the advanced fusion reactors. Sometimes they even build the Ragnarok, but they don't have the advanced fusion reactors to actually power it. Um, you can see this thing takes a whopping thirty, yeah, about thirty thousand twenty. We'll, we'll call it twenty five thousand energy per second in order to fire. Um, it is absolutely devastating. We are going to try and punch through the shields here, but those uh, those artillery are being deflected in the back line. Oh no. Yeah, a bunch of the artillery are being deflected all over the map here. And uh, suddenly, fire is raining down all over the place. We do manage to start landing a few shots in the back line here. Neptunio is in a little bit of trouble. Well, a lot of trouble, really. Ooh, a couple more. There it goes. Neptunio's base taken down by Ragnarok 2.0 as it's resurrected on the front lines here. Uh, we've already killed that player, so that's uh, we don't need don't need that one. Yeah, we're aiming we're aiming for a player that doesn't exist. I think we should probably turn our head and start firing at the purple player here. Probably going to be the better move. The force for the blue team looks a little bit stronger on the front lines, uh, but the back line has been completely ravaged, so uh, things aren't things aren't really as good as they seem. <laughs> That being said, that was a huge hit to the economy with those bombers back here. We still have a, a tremendous economy for, for Paraporo, though, in the, in the back line. And we've also got another 
calamity coming up and uh, up and running here. Does this one have any uh, great targets? Not really. This one's more for uh, more for show. Oh, these Vanguard are getting a tremendous trade against these pawns. Absolutely melting them with a nice big AoE. This Calamity starts firing, but again, it doesn't really have any great targets here. Maybe it could... I don't know, maybe it could try and shoot into this back line. It'd have to miss pretty badly to shoot into the back line over here, though. Uh, meanwhile, we are deflecting projectiles again. Ooh, and there goes Kalandori's base up north here. Lights up as these plasma shields deflect all of those plasma projectiles right into the heart of the green player's economy. Absolutely devastating. And indeed, the blue team will tap out with that one last... That one last devastating hit. That real gut punch. <laughs> Always tragic when those uh, those plasma shots get deflected and flung way further out than they uh, normally otherwise would be able to go. What an epic game. I do love to watch these pros play. Thanks a ton for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.